Yeah, they fly now. Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and in this video, I'm gonna unbox and build and show you how to magnetize your arm weapons for these guys, uh, so that you know you can uh, save less and uh, you know have more hobby dollars left over, I suppose. I'll also show you some cool 3D printed bits that are out there on the market, and maybe give you some ideas for how to save a little bit more money. Maybe you don't necessarily need this box here, although this guy is pretty cool and he'd be hard to get any other way there. So let's uh, jump right into it. So the new Captain with Jump Pack is $40 US and the Jump Pack in in Intercessors for five of them is $60 US, which is uh, you know, up significantly, not, uh, this isn't the first place to make the comparison that the Assault Intercessors were $60 for 10, and the only thing that's different between the two is that these have uh, jump packs for the most part, although, the, you know, the Sergeant does have some, uh, some special weapons there, not unlike the Assault Intercessors, right? So, they, you know, we're going to talk about that uh, as well, I think, but I just wanted to show you this first and talk about the pricing and then give you some ideas on how to get more for less. So, you know, depending on what you have and what you're willing to spend uh, on the new Space Marine releases, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you can just pick up some Primaris jump pack bits and add them to Primaris Assault Intercessors and there you go. You know, you spent 60 bucks. You might spend anywhere between, uh, you know, 30 to $40 on jump packs. That's $100 all day. And, uh, you know, you're already plus 20 to $30, depending. Um, and that, that you might, you know, already not be spending. But here's the thing. You might already have Assault Intercessor. So all you have to add is 40 bucks to that to get, you know, some jump packs. And jump packs are pretty available out there you can do just a quick google search of course you know they'll, they'll come up we we sell them uh on spikybits.com forward slash store uh, we have licensed the type or design ones people sell the loose assault ones you've got other ver varieties here from like heresy if you go over to etsy and type it in you're gonna get all sorts of uh, of wild looking stuff here that are pretty you know decently priced i mean 12 bucks uh, 10 bucks for, for five of these right here. This is good. Uh, we sell some singles. We sell some bundles over here. Then you got these ones. Uh, 10 of these right here are also a bestseller. So the sky's pretty much the limit on what you need out there. And then at that point, all you actually need is perhaps a power weapon for uh, your squad upgrade sergeant. But the lieutenant comes with one if you have the new lieutenant out of the Agastus box. Or you could just also get one from a bit seller or get one that's 3D printed and you're good to go. I know a lot of people out there also have been kind of harping on the fact that the designs for the Assault Intercessors, uh, you know, are pretty much the same for the Jump Intercessors. And here, you know, we put them side by side and you can see, yeah, you know, <laughs> a lot of the poses are similar. Like you've got, uh, what is it? This one here is basically the same as this one, is the same as this one. You've got this guy kind of uh, jumping off on the left foot. You know, you've got some over here that are that are jumping off like this one right here. You know, you put him on a tactical rock, he's basically doing the same thing. Or actually, probably more this guy right here, right, is basically this guy. And then you've got guys that are just kind of hanging out with their feet down, which are very similar to some of these poses here. And yeah, I don't know if I buy into, there's a vast conspiracy out there for GW to take your money. Um, you know, they, they are a company. They do need money to, to develop and, and do all these things out there. And I think sometimes, yes, they could give a little bit more value uh, for the dollar. Yeah, they could have probably put the shoulder pads in here and yeah, or the uh, jump packs in here. And yeah, as you know, I'm going to show you the... The five-man squad is two sprues with all of these weapons in these bits. And five assault intercessors are also two sprues. So, you know, at that point, you just kind of start, kind of got to start like, hey, am I buying into all of the all of the negative talk and the negative Nancys and going to just kind of not do anything, not hobby, not paint, not do anything. I'm just going to talk on the internet and, and say bad things on Reddit and say, you know, all this stuff on Twitter and let all this hate paralyze my hobby fun or 
maybe yeah hey i got 60 bucks i want i want the new jump intercessors i like how they look i'm gonna buy those or hey you know what i already got an assault i already got assault intercessors just hanging out all i need some bits and boom i get the new models i already got my assault intercessors put together i'm hobbying on i'm hobbying strong and you know that at the end of the day you really just kind of have to ask yourself are you going to buy into all the hate or are you going to actually hobby and hobby strong and, and get out there and get involved and play some games of 10th edition instead of just having wild opinions? And I think if you're here watching this channel, you probably want to know how to put these guys together because <laughs> you're actually hobbying and you actually want to play. So let's get to that. First up, we're going to take a look at the Jump Pack Intercessors uh, screw right here. No, yeah, these guys, you know, they're all attached uh, to their bases. They got like tactical rocks and tactical things. They're all on 32 millimeter bases. And like I said, they are um, gonna be two sprues, which is very similar to the Assault Intercessors as well, uh, but they have all their packs and everything on here too. So GW kind of figured out how to make it all work um, as far as that goes. Um, so let's just kind of take a close look at the sprues right here, just because I've had them out here. So they have uh, their bolt pistol equivalents here. They have the chain sword equivalents. Now, a lot of these are going to lock in uh, to the joints and to, let me get this up here so you can see it. They're going to lock into like this. Now, the pal the powder or the pal powder or the greaves rather are all attached, unlike some of the other Primaris offerings, which makes it, you know, uh, a lot less um, assembly as far as that goes, right? Now, something I wanted to draw your attention to is. I don't know if you can see it, but on the inside of these, they have the numbers for what they are. So if you make a mistake and you cut out all these things, um, they actually have the numbers or the letters. Those are letters, sorry. That that B is at, that eight is actually a B, y'all. <laughs> Pardon my old people eyes. So that's a B, and then there'll be Bs on the inside of all these joints and things. So you know what they all go to, because uh, I know some people out there like to clip them all. And the reason this is super helpful is because the instructions I've already looked at are pretty terrible and they don't line up, uh, which is typical for GW sometimes, I think. I think they forget. And um, the, the instruction manuals have come a long way, so it would be in full color and stuff. The jump packs here go together pretty interesting, which I'm about to show you in the instruction manual. So tops and bottoms and then the little thruster uh, thingies right there kind of lock in the back and then here's the rest of the weapons like I said if you got a power sword or a power weapon you're, you're good to go you, you you know you can save some money and use this all intercessors if you really want I suppose and there is definitely that so let's jump into the instructions um, these ones are pretty interesting you know because they have your two options for your sergeants here so you can go with just a chain sword you know uh, I have power he-man style up in the air or you got this one here um, they do have a little heraldry pad that you can put on him as well um, so pretty pretty basic here they're gonna show you how to put the uh, jump packs together and then they basically say hey this is how they all go together we're not gonna show you that again this is just gonna be assembly number one so keep that in mind um, and then you know they give you kind of the the raw the raw uh, broad rundown here, uh, which is super easy. Like the left and right legs, like I showed you, there's no greaves on the front. There is a, a holstered weapon for some of them. You know, some of them are going to have them drawn, so then you have an unholstered weapon. So just be pay you know pay attention to that. But you're not a dude that has his weapon drawn doesn't have his weapon in his uh, holster, so to speak. And then you've got a couple options on these special weapons here. Uh, if you really want to, I think they they all don't matter anymore based on the rules. But that's just tenth edition. It, you know, they obviously reserve the right uh, to backpedal at any time. And then you put your uh, your pads on there, and it's it's easy peasy. These are probably some of the more simpler models uh, to actually put together. And then you just glue the uh, the packs on here. Now, something we didn't do in the assembly was. Um, uh, make it so you could detach the packs with with magnets, but you could do that exactly the same way as I'm going to show you here in a minute after we talk about the, uh, the captain. Uh, you could magnetize your packs exactly the same way, and I've done that with the regular Marines. Now, jumping into the captain with the jump pack, and I think 100% if you're down to if you're DTB, you're down to buy some Marines. I gotta buy some Marines, and I like to look at the new jumpy boys. I think this guy is the way to go, especially if you have assault intercessors and you're like, yeah, I can just buy some bits from whomever. Um, this guy's dope. He's got a dope ass cape. He's got lots of weapon options. Um, this, I was really impressed with this model overall. Uh, it is $40 and it is just one sprue. 
but this is something that's gonna make your army stand out and you can get a couple of them and they're gonna look relatively different build wise i mean this guy fundamentally looks a little different than this guy you know what i'm saying like just because of the composition of the miniature even though they have inherently the same pose right here but just kind of keep that in mind so sprue wise you know we're looking at something like this this is sort of traditional configuration here what we showed you already where you know the greaves are kind of already uh in intact oh no actually these these ones do oh the greaves are separate because i guess they have a little bit of detail on them okay cool you got two different head options here uh the backpacks or the jump packs go together a little bit different um where you've got these these thrusters here socket into here and then you've got the little winglet uh, thingies as well but the cool thing about this is it comes with a lot of weapons now this isn't necessarily the same one that you're going to want to throw on uh, say your assault dudes because it looks like a very ornate power weapon so like i said maybe use the lieutenant one i suppose uh, if you really want to now you don't have to worry about the uh, the insides uh, because it is just one so they're not going to be all marked and things like that but that kind of makes sense right instruction wise uh this guy goes together very similar <laughs> to the assault intercessors except for the fact that you got to put the greaves on which i forgot about and then you've got three different arm options here and these uh lock in pretty well and i'll show you that here in a second and then you've got your two different uh, arm options there's also a fist there he is so there is a fist on there well um and then you've got the jump pack right here so do remember put the cape on the cape bit on first and then the jump pack goes on and the cape bit's really the thing that makes this uh, the most dope looking, I feel like. And, you know, maybe you want this guy to be something else or lead your uh, jump squad. You don't have to put the cape on at that point and he won't look, you know, quite as bombastic, I suppose. All right, so before I show you the assembled miniatures, I want to show you how to magnetize the arms so that when I show you uh, those miniatures, you're going to understand like how that process went and I don't have to like uh, kind of really super get into it. So let's let's jump into how to uh, assemble and magnetize uh, these miniatures here. Here are the the items I use uh, for magnetizing and they might be helpful to you. You don't obviously need all of them. The first is just uh, just a little uh, thumbtack here. And what I do with this is I, I kind of poke the hole exactly where I want to drill. So it basically makes a minute pilot hole. And the reason that's important is I really like this wow stick right here. This wow stick is fun. Um, during prom days, they are 50% off on Amazon. But what's great about it is you, you're not hand cranking everything and you can drill a nice big hole that you can hollow out really quick with your actual pin vise because it doesn't, it doesn't get uh, wider than this. And it's super fun to use. Just listen to it. It's not cheap, but it's one of those things that saves me time and I love it. You can also do the same thing with your normal pin vices, which I'm going to show you. Uh, but it's good to have a smaller one if you're not going to use the wow stick to drill your pilot hole. And then the bigger one in the, in the width of your magnet, which is going to be 1 8 by 1 16 inch uh, for this. And I always get my magnets from Magnet Baron because it helps support somebody in the hobby here and he has pretty good prices on them and the standards always stay the same. So you're going to want those two sizes for most Space Marine or any arm magnetization. They're going to want some normal uh, super glue sort of thing right here. Um, the, the purple cap stuff from BSI, the pink cap stuff, it's all great. And then you're going to want some kicker or Instaset, depending on the brand. Uh, this stuff is also great. And the way we apply this, which sometimes it's hard to see, is we're going to actually take the nozzle out. And then we're going to kind of squeeze the end and it dribbles a little bit onto the magnet stack themselves. We're not spraying it, it's not going airborne, it's not becoming an aerosol. So, you know, it, it keeps your area nice and fresh unless, well, you get it everywhere out the bottom of the uh, nozzle. So now let's talk about how to actually magnetize stuff. So first step to magnetization is you have to drill a hole for the magnets, right? And uh, so I have this nifty tool, it's called the wow stick. It's a motorized uh, little, um, uh, just a portable drill. Unfortunately, it's it has a small uh, drill bit on it. So first thing you do is just kind of get in there and get you a nice little pinhole to start with. And then you just you just drill and you just go a little ways and then you back off and then you go a little ways more and then you back off. And 
you just kind of repeat that process till you get to about the depth uh, that you want. Then you grab the appropriate size drill bit um, in a pin vise, in this case, one eighth inch. And you can, <laughs> it takes like two seconds and then you're done. And then just test fit your magnet stack to go in there. Make sure you left a little bit of room uh, for the glue. And uh, yeah, I think it's good. And then all you gotta do is just kind of uh, test fit and finish out the area. Make sure that you have the correct depth and you can back out the magnet stack a little bit. And uh, yeah, and then you're pretty much ready to glue your magnets in there. So most things out there can be magnetized with a little bit of super glue and a zip kicker accelerant. Uh, really all you need is just a stack of magnets, uh, 1 8 by 1 16th. And here I'm just putting a little glue in the hole there. Now you can see there, there's blue stuff in that hole and that's just some blue tack I stuffed down in there to create a base. Then I grab some of the accelerant um, and kind of squeeze it out, uh, taking the nozzle out of the, the, uh, the bottle there and uh, splash it on the magnets and then just kind of attach them in. And once you get the magnets stack in the hole, it's important to line it up with flush to where the, the magnets will separate flush to the, the surface of what you're magnetizing, in this case, the, the shoulder socket. And then you just kind of uh, let it do its thing and, and uh, harden. You can twist the magnet stack a little bit in your hand until um, the uh, the, it spins and you know that the, it has solidified at the bottom. Now grab your second part that already has the, uh, the hole drilled, put a little bit of glue in it. Now when you drill your hole, and we'll talk about that in, in a second here, when you drill your hole, you wanna leave a little extra space for glue, of course. So you put your glue in there. Again, I, I squeezed the side to uh, let the air out. And then I left the magnet stack in the uh, body of that space marine and then I flipped it around so I would get the reverse polarization so that way they would all stack together and here doing the same thing it's already got some kicker on it um, so it will solidify it in, in the hole right there there's glue all around it and behind it and uh, and yeah and then I just kind of uh, spin the magnets and it looks like it gripped that that one across the top so we'll just grab some clippers and kind of separate it right there and we get a nice flush uh, separation right there that will uh, attach flush to the uh, the arm socket right there and then you can test it just to make sure and there it is just locks into place so here's the uh, space marine captain all assembled up ready to go and like i said uh just remember to put the cape on uh and then your jump pack uh, situation right there and then of course you know you do your uh all, all your magnetization and everything and then once you do that you'll have a stack of weapons right here to kind of future-proof uh, your man together here. Now, something I didn't mention and something that's, uh, I think, important to talk about too is these shoulder pads right here, you're only going to get one set, right? But what you want to do is just put a little blue tack on there. And blue tack's great because it doesn't show up, it doesn't stick to paint. Um, they call it fun tack and all sorts of things in different languages. Just kind of depends on, I already put mine away, but it just kind of depends in your area what it, uh, it might actually be called. And I don't have any handy, so I don't know where it went. But anyway, it's poster tack, fun tack, blue tack. Uh, I think the Loctite makes some um, that I use here in the States. You can get it off Amazon. But what's cool about this is once you figure out like kind of what configuration you want, like say you want the, the sword, boom you got your sword on there and then you're like okay well just give me this auto boat with bolt pistol right there and something else i, I didn't uh, i didn't mention too is on all of the new stuff including the terminators they have these little studs on the shoulder in order to kind of make these guys uh, i guess when you put the shoulder pad on there appear more jacked or maybe a sizable difference or something or maybe just to make them stand out from the assault intercessors and then the terminators from obviously the old terminators or even just the terminators that uh, that perhaps came in um uh, the Leviathan box. I don't know exactly, but either way, it makes actually gluing stuff onto them a little bit difficult. But what it doesn't make difficult is if you have a little bit of blue tack in your uh, in your shoulder pads here, and then you just lock it in like that, and then you can even position it depending on the, the piece right there to make it look even better, which is really cool. And once you put it in there, just take a little bit of your, your cap for your glue and just kind of mash it down and get it to work uh, the angles and the curvature in there. 
and then you can just kind of boom get it on there and then you've got your model all future proofed and you can do them up however you want and things like that and just keep track of uh, the rest of your weapons there and you can swap them out whenever you need and i, I really like this guy i think the composition of the models uh pretty pretty sweet now obviously you could do that with other uh, captains and things out there but it's just kind of something to think about and then we've got our basic uh, duder man right here uh, where, where you know he's uh, kind of skipping across that the old tactical rock i suppose um just something to kind of keep in mind like it looks great the composition is good this is how it compares to you know big big man right here they are about the same size miniature give or take because they are kind of the new skulls now what i didn't grab was i didn't grab one of the my old uh, painted intercessor just to give you give you an idea of how they compare to the current stuff right there which yeah there you go but what I really wanted to show you was an Assault Intercessor, which I purposely grabbed the one that was a very similar pose leg style wise, uh, which you can see right there. It's basically, depending on how you, which you, you don't have a, these torsos are set, these aren't, right? You can twist them. Um, it's very similar leg posing right there. And I was like, okay, well, let's see what it would look like. And then with some 3D printed bits, now this is opaque. Once you prime it, it gets nice and crisp. And this is uh, the, some of the some of the bits we actually sell on our site. But you can find other ones on Etsy and things, depending on what you're looking for, of course. Um, but once you start looking at this, these guys are about the same size. The only thing that is different is that this guy's kind of skipping across the rock there. So if you find a way to kind of elevate this dude, um, you could, in theory, you know, put them, put them on your own little shale rocks or you could get some dope bases from Elvix or something like that and kind of elevate them up a little bit. And then you would also have that kind of look and you can put the little thruster uh, vent things down if you want, or you can just not include them all together if you don't like them all flared out like the F-14 afterburners right there. But I just thought it was something kind of cool to, to, uh, to, to show that you can do that sort of thing. So I think, you know, there is some good suitable alternatives out there for stuff you might already have with some new stuff you can buy and not have to pick these up. But whatever you decide, they're both going to look good and they both work for me. If you play me on the tabletop, I got no problem with either one of these guys right here. Um, and I definitely think if I had to recommend any of the products that we just talked about, I would definitely go with this guy because he is just super dope looking and there really isn't, you know, much, uh, much, oh, I just knocked that off. There really isn't much else out there that has this sort of similar posing, like Superman style, just kind of flying through the sky. So overall, I think I think this is a pretty interesting offering by, by Games Workshop. Obviously, there's some there's some ways to do things uh, how you want, and maybe some ways to do things how GW wants, I guess. But at the end of the day, it's uh, it's your hobby, and hey, don't let anybody tell you how to do it because at the end, it, you know, hey, again, at the end of the day, uh, do what makes you happy, and, <laughs> and don't don't buy into all that negative hate out there, and uh, you know, uh, I I think. In this day and age, it's very important uh, for, I think, mental health and also just uh, having fun. Hobby is supposed to be fun. So let's uh, let's do all we can to help make it fun for ourselves and uh, each other, I think. Right. Uh, so that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching our unboxing and build of the new Space Marine uh, Jumpy Boys, both uh, Captain and uh, regular uh, intercessors there. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our future videos. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep, whether you cancel or stay on. Just, it's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.